I was 14 and everyone was starting to start bands and things and I was like a really hyperactive child. I gravitated towards drums because it was a way of like using up energy and just battering something and kind of, you know, you could be as hyper as you wanted and I think I liked the idea of making a lot of loud noise. And then from kind of from that point on, my teenage years just revolved around drumming and skateboarding. That's kind of all I really cared about. an advert saying like like drummer looking for band influences include uh, Boards of Canada and Don Caballero and um, Yanis replied he sent me a handwritten letter it's great it was an amazing note and kind of like for my personal history like one of the most significant ones I think my parents binned it but yeah who needs who needs memories anyway <laughs> Practices were nine hours long uh, for the Edmund Fitzgerald in a terraced house in like, Oxford at full volume in someone's living room, no soundproofing. My first impressions of Yanis were more um, told to me by other people. I mean, he, he definitely had a, a, a bit of a reputation. He's never really done small talk or like, he's always just been very kind of focused I don't know, it's just some people have this vibe. I guess it's, it's gravitas, I guess. You know, there's some people that other people want to talk about. I just assumed that making it in music would be so impossibly hard to, to happen that I never considered it being more than a hobby. I don't know, when, when the band started, I just wanted to show, I wanted to do like the fanciest, frilliest drumming that I could on everything. And now I just want the songs to be as good as possible, and I don't want to get in the way of that. Um, but also I will fight to make sure that there's, you know, that there is a, like a rhythmic backbone. You know, I've been a, a big fan of electronic music and dance music for so long that it sort of drives me. Um, I like to get pumped up by music and I feel like I kind of need drums to do that. show it's all too easy to just sit on your laptop until five minutes before a gig and then just sort of flop onto stage and you know there's nothing worse than not being in a gig headspace and then sort of coming to in a gig and being like oh my god I'm on stage so yeah it, it, when everyone's in the same headspace it's great I'm definitely the biggest sort of fighter for the aux cable streets of rage 2 soundtrack <laughs> Oh, it's not coming through the fucking speaker, is it? Hold on. This is some of like early 90s video game rave. But no, I, like, I've always liked curating music and I always really took great pleasure in getting to know someone well enough to kind of get an idea of what they like and then be able to make a playlist with a lot of songs they don't know that they're going to like. That, I don't know, I've always found that really um, satisfying. And I guess that's kind of why I enjoy DJing, because you sort of, you read the room, and then you play songs that you think are gonna go down well in that particular environment.
music, obviously it has a like profound meaning to everyone, basically everyone in the world. Everyone has records that mean more to them than, any, than kind of anything else. For me actually, one of those records was Dark Side of the Moon uh, by Pink Floyd, because I remember when I was a teenager feeling like, didn't really know what it was at the time, I guess it was like, like kind of depression-y feelings and not really knowing what they were. And I remember listening to that record to sort of cheer me up and get me through it and, and it and it worked. The amazing thing about being in the band that's kind of incomprehensible is that we could have been that band for some other people to have that kind of profound effect on someone else. You know, that it's 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 amazing.